Can you say I'm off there? Right. About two years ago, this was October 2021, I was going to church one evening for a prayer meeting. Um, and as I was driving to church across uh, Child Bridge Lane, bridge that crosses the M26, uh, I saw a car that was parked in a strange way. On my way back from the, from the prayer meeting, the car was still parked there. So I thought, well, this is, this is a strange place for someone to park. And, but I, I passed it first, um, but then thought, no, I better turn around and go and see what it's about. There was a bloke sitting in the car, a young, young lad, and he was going through his phone and I could see that he was really distressed. It all started when my great nan passed away um, on Christmas Day 2017. And um, from there, my, my life just spiralled out of control. I found a, an escape in drinking drugs. Um, so I was, I was drinking every day taking drugs most days. I used to have a girlfriend. I tried to keep her and the drugs separate. And it got to a point where I, I just couldn't, I couldn't keep them separate anymore. Like the drugs were taking over my life. And um, we ended and then that was a final straw for me. I, I decided one night that was it. Headed to the bridge. I was sitting. On my, in my car, um, and I was—I'd literally just sat myself. I was about to get out of the car, ready to jump. And this man tapped on my window. So I rolled it down. So I just started to chat with him, ask whether he's right, and but he clearly wasn't. So I was really concerned about it. So I just talked to him, asked him a few questions, and then I asked him whether it's right if I can pray for him, um, which I then did. Yeah, he, he held my arm prayed for me and once he'd finished praying he said to me he said to me do you want to come back to my house for a cup of tea and I said I said no you're right mate <laughs> so I finally said to him listen please just don't do anything silly um, and, and know that God is with you so I left and drove off uh, but still wasn't comfortable with it so I turned around again and went to park behind him probably about 100 yards and sat there for another 20 minutes or so uh, just watching. I continued to pray and, and then I went home. So when Andre left, left me, he drove off in his car, I just sat there for about five minutes and I just thought, what am I doing? That's all that was going from my head, what am I doing? And then I sat there probably for another 10, 15 minutes and I just had a complete change of heart. Just a complete change of heart and I decided I don't want to do it. So I just, I drove home. When I drove to work the next morning, I was a bit nervous, but then very pleased when I saw the car was not there anymore. There was an eight month, eight month gap between that event and me deciding to go to church. Um, and within them eight months, I could not get, I could not get that man on the bridge out of my head. One day I just decided, right, that's it. So I went to, um, I went to my mum and dad's like family friends, our family friends, and I know they they go to church. So I, I waited for their names, Jenny and Dan. I waited for Dan to come downstairs, and I was sitting in the garden with Jenny and my mum. I walked inside and I said, Dan, can I come to can I come to church with you tomorrow? And he he looked so shocked. So I started church and I met a guy called Quincy, who's an elder at my church. And he he I'd like to say he sort of took me under his wing. Um I'd done a just looking course with Quincy. And it's it's just five weeks, it's just a get to know Christianity a bit more and learn about Jesus and at the end of the five weeks you can you can decide whether you want to believe or not believe um, so I, I decided to repent I was on the 30th of November 2022 and while I was saying while I was repenting 
I I had this fl- like feeling just flowing through me. I had my baptism on the 29th of January 20, this year, 2023. And I had people there that, that basically my church said they've never seen so many people come to a baptism. Attending church 18 months later with the visiting preacher, Dale, um, he shared the story just at the start of his sermon about this uh, young guy that they're baptizing and really just very briefly what happened with him that he was on a bridge, someone prayed for him, met someone, met the Lord and now he's being baptized and as he was telling the story my wife was leaning over to me and she said well, that was you and I said yes it was. It was just a very emotional moment to hear that and to learn that and to really feel I really feel blessed by the Lord for knowing the fruit of what happened there. Just You don't always know when you speak to people what the outcome of that is. And for me, it was extremely encouraging just to, to know that that event, which was only a few minutes, have actually ended up and I could be privileged to hear the end of the story. If I didn't have that encounter on the bridge with, with that man, if he never stopped praying for me, oh, I don't think. I'd be here right now telling this, telling my story. <laughs>